And we're back again. This will be video number 11. Reading from Molasses Moon. This time I think I'll read in a different format. And now I've got it in my stand here so it can sit up on the table or I can hold it this way and read. Okay. Get comfortable. Left off um, last time. Reading the part in chapter 5 about being dead without an ego and wondering how to interest someone in something you're doing. I flash to what I know and keep forgetting. Start from their ego. Start from where they are, if you want to bring them to where you are. Discussing several local industry men we admire for stubborn-mindedness and courage to rebel against anything to get something accomplished, Tom and I began to mesh. These wild-card, maverick men, many of them now in their 60s and 70s, Tom calls mind spinners. His tumbleweed repair truck has exercised all its tools and tricks, including welder, crane, and air compressor, for many of these hard-headed, hard-hat supervisors, owners, in heavy industry, from coal mining to oil wells. What links these men is unique, ingenious, personally devised ways to solve a mechanical or engineering problem. They've rebuilt and bootlegged trucks as well as most other types of heavy equipment to get some job done fast. Bootlegging usually means reassembling only the parts of the truck absolutely necessary to the use to which it'll be put. Irrelevant legal legalities like headlights are avoided. Explaining this isn't going to be easy, especially tying it to qualms and their purification to get to the type of consciousness needed to undermine matter. I'd better take a break and gather my wits, nuts, and get rid of impurities in my physical systems. I think I'll also get some fuel, a Velveeta egg sandwich. I have buttermilk bread instead of sourdough today. It'll do. I'll be speaking of making do, i.e. bootlegging and other similar scarcity management shortcuts in a minute or mile or two. I'm back with a luscious egg sandwich. Now, what the heck, I'll put it off a little bit longer. Put off facing my qualms about being able to clear my thinking and pull it together in a crisp, cunning, and funny few pages. I'll control home my computer keys to take me back to the beginning of this chapter to review. I'm back from review now. Continuity does seem to be a key. In the Herman letter, I questioned what continuity I'd established. I was seeking not only to avoid my qualms, but to maintain continuity by going back to the chapter's beginning before going on. There's more, but maybe I'd better get back to it. Bootlegging old iron was where I was before my sidetrack. The real point in getting at with the men above who have frustrated as well as awed and intrigued Tom and me with their hard heads is that they do have maverick ways and usually make them work. Their favorite words are, you can't do that. When someone says this to the mind spinners, they move, spin, heaven and earth, non-stop, until they prove they can do exactly that. They seem to live to do what shouldn't be possible. They'll spend more money and time doing something the hard way just to show they can. Sometimes 
This is frustrating to Tom, who works both hard and smart to save his customers time and money. Still, Tom and I cherish stubborn wild cards. I was telling him I was sad to see that they seemed to be a dying breed. They're, oh yeah, just watch me. And strong egos are vital to life. Okay, let's see if I can tie this to my distinction between matter and mind. I've said that I see energy, indeed all existence, in a physical world as having substance, such that energy is matter, at the wave-particle level. I've gone so far to, as to say that a qualm, the smallest particle of consciousness, is indeed a particle. Okay, again. Once you get rid of your qualms on an issue, you are at pure consciousness on that issue. This means that at this state of purity, your consciousness is actually nothing, which means to say, has no physical substance. Eureka! To free yourself from limitations of the physical plane, to get to nothingness, clean up your mind. Get rid of shit and ease terror. Better yet, delete it. Qualms are impurities of consciousness. Without them, you're free to create, truly create, to undermine matter. Then put your mind over it. Once you have no qualms about anything, you're free. Like the true yogis and maybe Buddha. But he says you're not free of matter until you no longer want anything. This is a different story altogether. He's not saying you have everything you've ever wanted. Or maybe he is. But he says that to transcend physical reality and its consequent suffering, you must not let yourself want anything. Not wanting whether from the availability of unlimited abundance as on Kashmir, or from being able to stifle, Buddha would say let go, of des desire, is an interesting state to contemplate. But I won't do that right now. Contemplate the state of being free of desire. I have too much to do. I have to continue, continuity, yes, to weave Tom's heavy industry wild cards into my quantum free consciousness. Oh boy, I think I need another break. It was clear when Tom and I were talking in stuffies. Maybe just some ice water with lime this time. And a minor welding of, and a minor voiding of bladder liquids. I could check the empty post office box too. Give my 65 pound black dog Tara a chance to pee in the field behind the building, on the walk to the post office, which is only one block from our house. How conveniently close for a writer whose box is empty, huh? One who mails something to someone more than once during a day. I took Tara, who used to be our neighbor's, our neighbor Herman's dog, to the vet for the first time a couple days ago. That's how I know she's exactly 65 and one-half pounds. When they asked what breed she was, I said she was probably a lab blend. Later, I was wishing I'd been quick enough to say without smiling, she's a cross between a wolf and a bear. Tara and Herman were brought into my stories in the last part of Quarter Moon Dews. Coincidentally, their names match those of an agent and editor in NYC. It's 10.30 a.m. March 10th. Skipped a day somewhere, didn't I? To provide a startup link for when I return, I'll type what slipped into my mind as a wild card weaving key. Tom's and my experience of each other's brain waves, their presence and absence, as when the refrigerator go out, goes off and you notice it's been humming for a while, yet you only notice because the sound waves have suddenly quit, leaving such a loud silence. Okay, I can leave on that point. Be back soon, I hope. In one piece.
No butt bruises from the stair edges. Chapter coming up now. Chapter 7. Bear with me. Wouldn't you know it. Man, maybe that's a good stopping point to uh, keep some curiosity going for the next video, which would be number 12, since that was this was 11, and we're learning how to count. So I hope you're enjoying this reading, since I'm enjoying doing it. We'll see how far we go with it. Take care.